Hello and welcome to the third video in our Using the Scale Tool series. My name is Dr. Jeremy and today I'll be walking you through step three, temporal scale. Our content that we'll be using will be Unit 3, World War I, and our objectives for today are to learn how to analyze a historical event in terms of temporal scale. So let's jump right into it. What is temporal scale? In our context today, we'll be looking at the consequences of World War I. When we look at temporal scale, it's more than just looking at one time in an event. We're looking at a range of time. So for this one, we're gonna look at the immediate consequences. So the things that happened right after the war. Then we're going to look at the short-term consequences, things that happened after the war, but they have some sort of ending to them. And then we're going to look at long-term consequences, potentially things that were never resolved or bleed into another event. Another way to think of temporal scale is to remember we're thinking about time, but we're zooming in and out of time. When we look at the immediate, we're zooming in. We're looking for the things that directly happened right after the event. When we look towards our short term, we're starting to zoom out and we're looking at things over a relatively short period of time. And then when we do the long term, we're looking at something that has gone much further beyond the event. You can also think of it as looking further into the bigger picture of an event. So let's put this into action and see how this actually looks. The text that we will be using is from the Unit 3 text set. The text is called The Search for Peace and Democracy by Trevor Getz. You can pause right now to read it, and then we'll start together. Now that you have read the paragraph, let's annotate. It is always good when you're annotating to have a purpose. Today, our purpose is temporal scale. And then also to have a key for yourself as well. Today, we're gonna to do yellow for immediate consequences, blue for short-term consequences, and purple for long-term consequences. Take a look at my annotations for this. I see lots of immediate consequences here. Right after the war, we have 10 million dead. We have over 30 million injured veterans. We have global debt and damaged economies. The text also mentions that there are millions displaced and destroyed empires. We also see towards the bottom some short-term consequences. We have the spread of influenza, which killed millions of people worldwide. And we know from our study of World War I that though the influenza started in the war itself, it goes on after and won't end until 1920. And global debt and damaged economies also tend to go on beyond the immediate. So you could have also highlighted that in blue if you had done this already, because we also know that during the 1920s and 30s, many of the countries long after the war were still struggling with their economies. Let's look at the next paragraph together. So you could take a pause again to read the paragraph. You may have highlighted many things for immediate or short term, but I would like to particularly look at one line. If we look at the line, Germany was also directed to pay 33 billion in fines and punishment. This may seem as an immediate consequence to the war, which it was. Germany in the Treaty of Versailles, as mentioned above, will lose land and they would be fined to pay 33 billion in punishment. Um, and this was written into the Treaty of Versailles and the War Clause and also structured into the treaty itself. However, as I think about that line, there are further consequences. If we look at it, Potentially, this line is a short-term consequence because even after the war, long into the 20s and 30s, we see that 
Germany's loss of land and their fines are going to lead to hyperinflation and economic depression. And so if you highlighted this line in blue, absolutely correct, because there are longer consequences to this line. But then I also think it could definitely be considered a long-term cause. So if you look at this consequence, we see that Germany's loss of land and the fine, which would lead to economic depression, which we mentioned in short term, will also lead to national disillusionment and eventually could be one of the causes for the rise of Hitler and the Nazi party, which is a very big picture long-term consequence. So if you highlighted this in yellow, blue, or purple, all of this is correct. But remember, when you're looking at things in terms of temporal scale, it is about how you use your evidence to justify how you are looking at this event. So if you use it as purple, definitely write down that it is a long-term consequence, but tell us why it is a long-term consequence. This is my finished chart. Once again, I'm keeping this as an immediate, but it could be in any way. And many of these as well could be different. So for instance, the Treaty of Versailles could be considered a short term or even a long term, depending on how you viewed it. It's all about your justification and your reasoning. Once we are done with our annotations, the next step is to definitely put things down. So in our chart that we had seen before, we would write down our immediate consequences, things that happened right after. And if you see in bold, I put what we saw as potentially all, all of the consequences. We also have our short term and then we have our long term consequences. I hope this was helpful in you dissecting and understanding temporal scale. And I hope to see you for our next video where we put everything together and look at historical understanding. Have a great day.